Hey everyone, it's me, Stagger. I'm still a little bit sick, but uh, I am well enough to do another video, which is great because I've been meaning to do, because I've been wanting to do this video for a while. Um, plus, I have a channel to maintain and blah 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 blah. So, anyway, <clears throat> so uh, I got a package from China, and what's in the package is actually, um, well, you can kind of see in the background. Basically, I've been needing to get some replacement caps, and uh, unfortunately, they don't just sell the rubber bit of these caps, and um, so, yeah. So, anyway, uh, the thing is about these controllers is that the, um, is that basically, you know, it's the iconic GameCube controller, and yeah, I could get a knockoff one, which is what this one is. But the thing is, though, this one actually irritates me. True, it works great. Works great. I can't really notice any real input lag, but... But... It's really noisy. I mean, even this third third-party controller here... It's uncomfortable to wield, but it's not as noisy. But... Compared to the official one here, hear that? That's actually really satisfying as compared to this. So, anyway, I have three controllers that needs the replacement cap. This Waybird controller, which really feels nice in my hand. In fact, it's actually my favorite controller out of all of these. Uh, the official controller and this third-party controller. Now, I won't be using all the caps, just the um, caps that require require maintenance. This is the only one that requires the C-Stick to be replaced. And even though this one has some heavy scratches on the C-Stick, let me shine the light here. Uh, I guess it's still a little bit hard to see, but yeah, even though this does have some heavy scratches because I tend to dig my nails into rubber, it's just a bad habit of mine, um, you know, I'm going to be replacing the, the sticks, and uh, this is actually very cheap. In fact, um, it's, it says it's an 8-pack, but it's really just four caps, or four joist cap, joystick caps and four C-stick caps, and I was kind of expecting that, but um, it cost me only uh, $2, or actually no, it actually was free for me, because I had a return item that cost me uh, $15, and it turned out not to even function correctly, and um, yeah, so anyway, we're going to be good, anyway, so, um, I brought props for this line, but it didn't turn out I couldn't get a good line into it, but I'm just going to go ahead and say it anyway. Um, many people consider this as one of the best controllers out there. To me personally, I say the SNES is definitely the better controller. Uh, I would even accept the old SP, SP because it's very lightweight. I can actually play use this with one hand without even having to worry about well, without having to worry about the extra weight on the other side. And uh, to me, that feels great. And this controller is actually light enough to for me to actually just play with one hand, which is great. But uh, I guess each their own. Anyway, unfortunately, I don't have my dagger today. I had to stow it away because, of, because I had to get... Well, I had to get rid of some bed bugs, and which is why I'm actually not on my couch because it's currently very infested. But my bed, my bed is bed bug free now. But uh, anyway, we're gonna go ahead and open this up the best we can without our dagger. Wow, that is some strong glue. <sighs> okay, here we go. So we got one. Where are the rest of them? Oh, they're in here. Okay. But yeah, it's pretty much what I expected. 
So, made by Magi Deal. Magi Deals, apparently. Well, anyway, it's gonna go ahead and get our toolkit and start unscrewing. Now, I know it tends to get pretty boring to uh, watch me unscrew things because it seems to be what the majority of airtime is with uh, with these hardware modding videos. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and skip ahead, but something you will be needing to know is that you will be requiring a tri-wing I think it's zero let me try it real fast yeah tri-wing zero and if you're planning and if you're using the third-party controllers I think it's actually using the Philips zero <laughs> let me just make sure that is correct I tore off the uh, authenticity sticker before I started recording this video. I might as well unplug this, or, okay, it's not that one. Which one is it? Let's try number one. Eh, that fits a little bit better, still a little bit stiff but I'm able to somewhat unscrew it and I guess just play around with the Phillips head but it does seem like one is working so yeah I'm, I'm, I'm actually gonna be unscrewing this because I want to see how it works anyway I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew all of these controllers and I'll be back Okay, so now I have them all, well, unscrewed. Um, I want to point out something real fast, though. It seems that every single one uses machine bit uh, screws, so in other words, the one with the flat, flat end on there. Except for those um, replicas that you can get, um, they seem to be using just those real, those pointy ones. Um, the only thing I can really think of as the reason why they did it is because sometimes, you know, when you screw in something, the screw doesn't necessarily fit that well, so you gotta have that starter thing. I'm not a tool expert, I'm sorry. But anyway, um, let's go ahead and open these up and see what makes these tick. Starting off with the wave bird. Oof. That did not sound pretty. It seems to stick. There we go. Now I will admit that does look pretty intriguing. From. There's also a bunch of filth right here. Doesn't seem like any way I can get that off, off properly. But just look at that. You got the paddings of the... Wow. Super neat, actually. So this is actually a Mitsumi board. Mitsumi board. And, um... It actually looks... basic. Um, the only difference is actually this receiver up here and then everything else looks like just your typical thing as for this dial right here you know this dial never really made sense to me why come it doesn't just stick to 16 and why does it have multiple settings considering the fact that it's just considering the fact that you know the 16 is the only way you can get really get free range from this and there's actually quite a bit of dust on that start button so the start button is actually on the circuit board itself which is actually quite interesting and then of course their traditional d-pad is on there where it's actually just a bunch of buttons and then you just press then all you do is 
use this as sort of a crosshair so that way you can- ah shoot! The buttons! <laughs> well great, I have more work to do. I guess that's okay, I gotta learn how to assemble these anyway. Thinking about starting a paint painting business because currently at the only the only market there is you can get a new shell for like sixty for like sixty to eighty dollars plus shipping and handling and I'm like that's complete bullcrap. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can't see why this is sticking here. Is it because it's just is that the way it's supposed to be? Is there some more I have to do? Because I thought it would just be as simple as taking it apart and... I thought it would be just as simple as taking it apart, but it doesn't seem to be that way. Hmm. I might have to be... I might have to cut it right here and uh, figure this out. Okay, so I did open up the bag. That's why you see more button or more of these things. Um, from looking at it, it might not actually be designed for the wave bird, but it might it might still work. Anyway, so I was playing around a little bit um, after looking up after looking up a tutorial, but the thing is, this tutorial was more or less on how to fix like a misaligned uh, joystick, and that's not what I really wanted. But as I was playing around with it, turns out you could just pull it right off and there it is. You got yourself your entire joystick right there. So you just pull that off, plop in the new one. I'm gonna need to see from this angle. Hmm. Oh I see. So as you can see here, the joystick, if it'll focus, Joystick is actually more of a rectangle with a circle underneath and then there's a dent right there. And then you just gotta pretty much just align that up. So, this might be a little bit tricky. Oh, nope, right there. Perfect. And we have ourselves a fixed joystick on the Wavebird. Now, uh, first things first, I gotta make sure I put in these buttons correctly. I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah, I did. Okay, just making sure. Double checking. Always double check your work. So anyway, let's go ahead and pop it back together. Are you sure it's as simple as this? Except... oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I knew the Z button was off, but I realized the start button was out off too. Just pop that back in. There we go. So now for the Z button, how does that work? Oh, okay. There's like a little notch right there. I think all I do is just attach it to that notch. I think. Okay, so I know it goes in this way. So then all I do is fit it somehow. I think that's it. Let me make sure. So easy to take apart, so hard to put it back together. That's the way that's the way any kind of fixing goes. I think it's misaligned actually. Here, let me go behind the camera so that way I know you guys can see. Okay, let's see here. Yeah, it's slightly misaligned. We gotta fix that. Okay, I think it'll fix itself once it's being screwed in, maybe? Hmm. There we go. Got it. Hopefully. <laughs> I'll be testing all these controllers out at the same time. Then all I do is pop that back on top. If it will let me. Let 
There we go. Look at that. Oh, that feels good too. That feels really good. It feels very, very nice. Okay, so let's let the screw it back together, but I'll be doing that later. Now for the official one. Now for the official one, and now that I know how to put it back together, I'm pretty sure it won't be that hard. After all, the weight bird was actually the hardest one. It required eight screws compared to everything else, which required six. Okay, just lift it up. Flip it over carefully. There we go. You can tell this is a pretty old controller right here. I mean, look at that gunk right there. We're not here to clean it because it's it already works. So anyway, this is actually a lot simpler in design wise. Um, I mean, it's still pretty basic compared to. I mean, it's still pretty basic look wise. I mean, it's a controller really. But I have, do notice that there is actually a capacitor right here. J did catch me a little bit off guard, but. Um, Besides that, it's pretty much the same thing as the Wavebird, just, just uh, not with the same, just not with the extensive amount of technology that was in there for the receiver. Anyway, then all that's left is to take this off, which is actually going to be a little bit trickier because apparently it's on a separate board. Come on. There we go. Plop the new one in. Pretty sure it's the same design as the Wave Bird. Yeah, looking at it, it is. I just need to plop it back in. At least the C stick has a guide in a sense. Unless if the C stick is, and there goes the Z button. Unless the C stick is off centered, the C button. Ah, boy. Jeez, there is a ton of dust in there. Alright. It's gonna take a little bit of... well, right here. Okay. Trial and error. There we go. Got it. And then now for this part right here, just kind of figure it out, twist it. There we go. Now to put the Z button back, back on there. There we go. Okay, yeah, there's going to be some issues putting it back on, of course. Can't be that simple. Okay. Y goes here. No, Y goes here. No, Y goes there. There we go, Y goes there. Uh, where did the X button go? There it is. Okay, I'm actually going to need to put it right here. How am I low on battery? Every single time I record. Every single time. Good thing I have backup. But I'm going to keep it recording until... It runs out. Might actually be a little bit. <sighs> Gotta 
flip it around, put it in there, okay. Okay, as soon as I flip this over, it's, the buttons are going to fly out. Great. <laughs> yep. That's alright, I gotta test the... It's more important to test the analog stick than anything else, really, so... I'll be doing that later, I guess. Or let me cut real fast. Replace the battery while I'm at it. Okay, so admittingly, it's actually been giving me some trouble to put it all back together. But, uh, anyway... Important thing is... It's in there. And it actually feels quite nice. And I'm going to take it apart again once I get to the, um, the, the count, uh, well, I, I'm going to call it a counterfeit controller, the counterfeit controller, um, so that way I can kind of see the comparisons between the two. Also, something I just kind of forgot to mention earlier was actually the back of the thing. And I was actually quite intrigued what I saw. Um, the back of this wasn't really all that interesting, but rather, but I was kind of intrigued about how the rumble worked. Um, typically, there's like a. I thought what would go on is that there's like a little spinny thing up there, but it doesn't appear that there is such a thing. But anyway, this was actually the th thing I was interested in. It appears that the L and R buttons are actually a part of the back controller, and these use these tiny um, Phillips screws, right? Yeah. Hey, hold on, let me get a closer look. Yeah, they use these tiny Phillips screws, and the back is actually made out of plastic, which I'm actually quite surprised. Sorry, there was a lot of noise that went on. Anyway, which actually caught me by surprise, because I would normally expect um, Nintendo to use metal instead of plastic. But, uh, I guess they're a controller and they get to, I guess, uh, you know, um, people be none the wiser. But, uh, come on. Oh, whoops. Also, I did notice that they apparently pinch uh, this part of the cord. I don't know what that is really for, but um, it's there, I guess. I guess it's there to kind of protect it a little bit. Now, refitting this thing is actually pretty difficult. Another thing I gotta admit is that, um, apparently, I left my... Okay, I'll do this later. I left my other... Left my other battery pack with, uh, where all my... The rest of my stuff, where I put the, uh, bed bug... Where I put away for the bed bug treatment. Anyway, let me go ahead and just place it on the floor for now. Anyway, so now for the other third-party controller, or now for the third-party controller, and this is the uncomfortable one. The Yabo has a turbo feature, but the thing is that makes it uncomfortable is that it sort of digs into your palms right here, and it's jagged in a sense. It's not as rounded and just the square design was overall a bad choice. Anyway, so we're going to be taking it apart, this time facing up. And that didn't really help matters because everything is still intact, including the board. Well, great. Okay. Okay, um, hmm. Yeah, I thought it would be more like that. Just having this little thingy spin around and 
consider that rumble. Anyway, let's see, I guess... Ah, there's the problem. There's actually... There's actually more screws I have to take out, which shouldn't be a problem, actually. But hey, at least we know that this one actually has a lot more security than the official ones. Even uh, looking at the inside right here, you can actually see that, well, it's actually more or less the same. Anyway, I need this one right here. So there are three screws. Uh, let's see here. Here it is. Third party. Are they the same screws? Eh, it looks like they are. Yeah, they're they're pretty much the same screw. Now I still find that rather interesting on how the on how oh it looks like there's actually four screws. I do find it rather interesting on how the C stick is actually detached from the rest of the from the rest of the circuit board. I would have to imagine it would be it would still be the set or intact. I guess that would mean that there would be more screws or something and maybe screws cost more than the wires. I don't know, but I still find that rather intriguing on how that works out. Not only that, but looking at the back here, it looks like um, putting it onto the circuit board was more or less uh, des after design or something. I don't know. It's weird. It's really weird. Anyway, come on. This thing is very well fitted. Am I missing a screw? Let's see. No, it's just very st stiff. I think it's because of this right here. Wow, uh, there's more security in this third party controller than there is an official one. That's interesting. Oh, come on. Hmm. No, that's definitely not a screw. Okay, there we go. Got it. Got it. Got it. Oh, wow. That's very shiny. <laughs> it looks more like the circuit boards I'm used to. But, um, essentially, yeah, you can already see some differences. Differences, like, of course, the uh, third party blob, solder blob. Gotta have that in any third party device. This thing is actually a lot more stiff than the previous ones. Like, if I were to take my weight bird here, you can actually see it jiggle around a little bit, which I did actually notice when I, when I put it back together, but I don't think it's gonna affect anything. Besides, I haven't even tested it yet. This thing's a lot more stiff, and I'm pretty sure all I do is just pull it out like the rest. There we go. Thing is, it probably might not fit because there's actually a different. It's actually made of metal, which I'm actually impressed with. Instead of plastic, like everything else was. But yeah, it's a different shape than the rest of them. But we'll still give it a try. Eh, it works. Well, it's loose though.
Yeah, that's like fits very loosely. Let's uh, screw it in and see how it feels, I guess. Yeah, that's bad. Okay. So, unfortunately, I will not be able to use this third-party controller. And I'll be fixing it later, because I'm honestly tired. <laughs> anyway, so now for the other controller right here. here. So we won't be putting that in testing unless... Well, I guess I will. Oh, that's part of the screwdriver. Anyway, so now for the counterfeit controller, which already is you know, in pretty good shape because this is a rather recent controller. Although it does seem like that the uh, stick is warped a little bit. In fact, the stick is slightly bigger than the other one, but that's actually okay in my book. So let's go ahead and open her up. Yeah, it's basic. <laughs> nothing special, nothing new. But I will go ahead and take off that. Yeah, that's like super bare bones basic right there. There, there doesn't seem like to be anything too special about it. Although I will go ahead and say it's more towards the design of this. This one just has like a slight jagged edge. Here, let me shine more light there. Slight jagged edge on the top compared to this one where it's all smooth. Anyway, so that's how you kind of tell them apart though. And um, let's go ahead and look on the inside here. Oh yeah, there's the solder fob. The famous third-party solder blob. Of course, you can't really have a third-party controller without a solder blob. And then everything else, it uses copper conduction instead of uh, what it was using earlier, which I'm guessing was aluminum. Wow. Um, that's a very thin wire, and this is the rumble feature. That's crazy, actually. Uh, it's actually fairly heavy, too. And looking at the back here, you can see that there's actually no supports, which is probably why it's a rather noisy controller. Like, looking at the back here, yeah, you can see that the springs are right there. And it's essentially just a smaller circuit board, too, which isn't a bad thing, but... Okay, now let's go ahead and get the official one real fast and show you the major differences. Yeah, here we go. So yeah, these are actually using a conductive um, rubber rather than a conductive rather than a conductive metal like copper. These use a conductive rubber, um, of course, solder blob, and then no solder blobs in the back. That is actually twist-tied compared to this one. It's actually quite scary. <laughs> scary. Like, there's actually barely anything in the back besides a few points where there's actually some... Are those soldered in the front? Yeah, those are soldered in the front. So the rumble was soldered in the front. Okay, as for the, yeah, same thing with the C-stick, too. As for the regular stick, 
and you can kind of see that this one this one's just a slightly different design but overall this one feels a lot more cheap and it looks like a instead of it being mostly up and down it's actually left and right compared to this more it's up and down which I kind of find interesting because considering that you know there is actually you know most 3D games you're mostly going forward instead of left and right so it makes sense that they are actually going up and down but this one's going left and right which is very peculiar I guess it's more for those people that are really interested in getting fighting games but that does mean that the spring for left and right is going to be slower but just slightly slower anyway so I'm going to be putting these back together and uh, I will be right back okay so I was working on the counterfeit controller um, I kind of encountered a minor problem Basically, it kind of has to deal with the rumble, rumble feature. Now, most rumble features typically have it upside down like this. But the thing is, though, the cord doesn't really seem to wrap all that well. And, well, that's like the best I can get it, like this. But that honestly terrifies me. Reason being is because reason being is because, you know, of how loose it is, and if I had to put it in back in the controller, like, and when I put it back into the controller, it, well, first of all, it's so loose that the thing is already fallen down, and the, yeah, this is, this is clearly not working. I could try to tape it up, tape it up, um, but the thing is though, with it being upside down like this, the only proper place I could put tape it would be right down there. And the thing is though, that's in the middle of the spiral, right here, and so that could eventually cut off. If I tape it up here, now it's in the way of the L and R buttons. So I have to put it upside down and then tape it. Oops. Put it upside down. It looks like it's supposed to be like this. It's free and clear. And then I can tape it right down here. Just ever so carefully and then that would be the safest way around it so go ahead and see if I can tape it up first I gotta unwrap the tape that might help take off the sticker there now I would find the opening there it is Okay. Does that thing spin? No, it does not. It does not spin with the console. Actually, let me push it back a little bit further. And there we go. Drew the uh, spinning. It's kind of a temporary fix, and uh, it's taped haphazardly, but it'll do for what I'm trying to accomplish. Besides, I'm not even a big fan of the rumble feature to begin with, so if it's less, it won't bug me at all. So anyway, I'm gonna continue putting this back together. So as it turns out, I also I hit another snag. Apparently, um, 
these wires here will have to rely on being behind that little plastic bit right there oh sorry you can't see it that little plastic bit right there um, in order for it to basically not get caught onto the spinner here I'm honestly almost just tempted just to take it off uh, it won't damage anything um, as long as I put tape over there so that way the current won't you know flow and break everything uh, it is tempting to do that but I'll see if I could probably salvage it it's probably about as close as I can get it like that I'm not sure if you can even see properly but yeah like that alright well guess that means more taping to do and um I'll try to see if I can make it work. Alright, actually I may not even need some tape this time. I'll make it work. Okay, I will admit this was a lot more trouble than I thought it was going to be. But, um, I turned on the camera because apparently, <laughs> well, it already happened. And, um, I've slipped in the replacement and it actually works fine um, I'm gonna keep this though um, try to fix it as much as I can but um there it's already fixed see why can't we just get this rubber bit that will make things so much easier but anyway it does fit and um, yeah <laughs> I'm gonna be using this instead uh, one of the things that did actually bug me about this one was actually the fact that it's rubber um, did clash with the plastic a lot and it felt just it felt like I was going a little bit slower than I was supposed to uh, this thing is actually a lot smaller and although it still does clash with the plastic it's not it's not as bad and it kind of clashes more with the uh, plastic on plastic instead of rubber on plastic. Uh, by the way, this is fully fastened, so this thing is ready to go to be tested. So anyway, I'll be right back. Okay, so I am struggling putting together the L and R buttons. Um, I'm gonna just ignore them for now because I'm honestly stuck and figure it out later in the future. Um, I'll still test the controller out, I guess. But, um, yeah, that's just ridiculous. Um, you know, the others had a shield, and if you look at the plastic molding, you can actually see, actually you can't see, there you go, now you can see, almost. Yeah, there you go. You can actually see right there is that there there actually is a hole for that one at least, but the other one doesn't seem to have it. But, you know, that means that at a time they did think about it, but then they thought, nah, it's not that important. But, <laughs> the shield's kind of important if you're just going to replace the joystick. But of course, um... Of course, uh, if I want to get into the shell painting business, I gotta learn how to take that apart and reassemble it. But, um, that'll be something for the future to decide. Anyway, so, I'll go ahead and just put, uh, put whatever I can uh, back together with this, and then, um, yeah, I'll be, I'll be right back. So I found a screw on the third party controller, or the Yabo controller. Um, but I think it's going to be fine. So I do find the Z button a little bit loose. And there does seem to be quite the opening crack right here. But I think it'll be okay. Anyway, now to test the, these things. I don't have my regular TV, but luckily the other day um, I found a very nice 
a very nice RCT. I think it's called RCT, but basically it's a very nice bubble TV. You know, the fat ones. And um, I felt like that was kind of a blessing in disguise because I can now test input lag, which is great. Because um, unlike the uh, TVs we have nowadays, these RC TVs are, well, they really don't have any input lag. So anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and put up my parts here. I'm going to put these parts into here so that way they aren't collecting dust. And I know that isn't every part. Um, actually, I think that is. Yeah, that is every part, actually. And these things... Well, the, might as well throw them away. They don't serve any purpose anymore. So anyway, I'm going to go to the TV room and plug in my GameCube and be right back. Alright, so, what better way to test input lag than with a fighting game? Of course, I think you know what's going on here. I am liking this bubble TV, though. I think I might keep it. <laughs> Of course, Super Smash Bros. Melee, it's a complete classic. This is the complete file. Um, you know, totally legit. No codes at all. 100%. <laughs> uh, seriously, though, that's the only thing that's really been cheated. Like, if you were to go to the event, I actually worked very hard to get all. I thought I worked very hard to get all of these. Must be in a different save file, but, you know. Anyway, we're not here to do that. As you can see, though, um, I'm actually using the WaveBird. Um, does seem to work pretty well, but we're going to be testing all of them. So, my main character is indeed Mr. Game & Watch, but the thing is, though, I'm not sure if that's even a good choice to, uh, really test out a character. So I think maybe a good one would actually be Kirby. Because Kirby would actually... Yeah, I think Kirby might be the way to go here. What? And then we're going to choose Final Destination. Because there aren't any obstacles in the way. Okay, yeah, I am not used to Kirby at all. <laughs> I also haven't played this game in so long. The Z button's a little bit stiff. Is this grab really that slow? Or is it just because of the Z button? Anyway, uh, this one's the... Oops. This one's the official controller. If... You can't even see it that well. This one's the official controller. Seems like I assembled it pretty well. Z button again, it feels a lot more springy, but compared to the other Z buttons, this one's actually very responsive. So, overall, not too bad. I can even do dash, dash dancing. Uh, it doesn't seem to work as well with the wave bird, though. I gotta like lightly flick it for the with the wave bird, but the official controller, that's really nice. Now here we have 
Oh, whoops, wrong button. Here we have the uh, counterfeit. It kind of has a similar issue with the Wayford. Um, do you need to flick it just ever so lightly? Oh, what? There's a time limit? I forgot about that, actually. Oh, wow, with the others, I see. Because there's going to be bombs later. Ah, uh, that... Hearing that rumble makes me freak out. That's from the Yabo controller, too. Okay, let's see. Um, oh yeah, that guy changed the time limit. Yeah, it's like flicking right there. Okay, now with the official controller. Same thing with the... I just gotta flick it. Buttons do seem to be pretty responsive, though. Okay. I don't feel the rumble of the unofficial one, though. I think I might have broke it, but that's fine with me. Okay, now for... the third-party controller, which had no modifications technically, but, you know, I did struggle to put it back together, so... Once again, pretty responsive. Z-button's a little bit loose, but that's okay. Turbo function... Seems to work fine. Flawlessly, actually. <laughs> um, started the unofficial ones a little loose. Okay, now for a character that I know how to play. I can really determine the characteristics of Game & Watch here. Oh yeah, I forgot. There's no parachute. So if I want to use the Keyblade... Oh jeez. There was a little bit of delay with when I pressed B. Besides that, I'm able to control it quite fine. Now with the unofficial one. Oh yeah, I don't have a Z button. <laughs> Forgot. <laughs> okay. The third party. I am not used to melee. Oh, God. Z button is by far the most responsive on this one. Okay, and then, um, oh yeah, I haven't tested the official yet. Ah. Jeez, Smash 4 Game & Watch is so much easier to use. Oh, right. I forgot. I don't have a computer that I will stand back up, so I can't 
necessarily use his ledge attack. Or use his attack when they, you know, when they're supposed to get up on the ledge. <laughs> I need friends. But yeah, uh, with the with the exception of the um, of the counterfeit controller, I seem to did pretty well reassembling it. Everything seems to be uh, working perfectly fine, and those uh, replacement joysticks are excellent. How long have I not been recording? Oh wait, yeah, I have been recording. Okay, that's good. <laughs> okay, but yes, um, the replacement joysticks are very, very great. They're very excellent, and I do recommend getting getting some if you ever need a joystick replacement. Um, I guess I'll leave a link to where I got them, but really, all of them should essentially function the same, because after all, you're just replacing a, a piece of plastic with a rubber with a rubber end. And that's honestly it. So, um... Yeah, everything else is really a part of the controller. I mean, there are some loose ends, like, uh... As I mentioned... Actually, as I mentioned before with, like, the weight bird, uh, I can't really dash dance unless I were to, like, just a little bit... just jostle it a little bit. But compared to the official one, where I can dash dance all day, Anyway, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it, really. I just realized I didn't even bother testing the, uh, C-sticks. So I'm gonna do that right now. I mean, you can't really test the C-Stick properly in a game like Smash Brothers, to be fair. But, um... I mean, because look at that. That's, like, super slow. I mean, it could also just be Game & Watch, but... I don't know why Smashers even bother using the C-Stick. I mean, yeah, the timing is a lot more strict in, uh, to use smash attacks in, in this game, in Melee, than it is in other games, but I just don't use the C-Stick all that much. Seems to work fine. Yep, seems to work fine. Anyway, that's it, and I'll be seeing ya. So later on it occurred to me that I can actually use the, um, the rubber bit on the counterfeit controller and fit it onto the third party controller. And it works. Although I will go ahead and say that it looks like it can come off at any point in time. But so did the official controllers in a way. Um, but, you know, for right now, it actually stays on there pretty nicely. Um, so, so if you just need to replace the cap and you have the money for it, you can actually just get a counterfeit controller and take off the rubber end and fit it onto your poor sticks. Speaking of which, I may actually need to fix this at some point. It looks like it's about to fall off. But um, anyway, uh, just keep in mind though that these things it could just be because the rubber bit is off on this one. Uh, the counterfeit controller um, stick 
actually looks like it is slightly smaller uh, compared to these replacement ones. And these replacement ones, I'm still going to be recommending them because they're like super cheap. Um, but the thing is though, it's like really solid. And I say that because like, like if you look at the rubber on the end here, it's not going to come off anytime soon as compared to this one right here. Um, let's compare it to this controller with the rubber cap from the counterfeit controller. Alright, actually, I guess that's really the best angle I can give you. But anyway, anyway, it's a bit, it's pretty solid. A little bit too solid, actually. Um, it's actually made of a harder rubber than, um, than the caps, which I guess makes sense because you know you don't want it to fly off but it does actually hurt your thumb with some intensive um, extended play but it will still not hurt your thumb as much as without the caps which is which is a good thing um, that's pretty much everything I have to say about that um, I understand that when uh, you're getting like a shell from like a colored shell, custom shell from the shell coloring business. Fifty dollars. That's ridiculous. Um, that if you wish to get a, a different color joystick or analog stick, I guess it's really called, then they tend to use a PlayStation um, stick which I guess if it works it works really so um, I guess choose whatever one would uh, fit you best I remember even going to the store and seeing some replacement um, rubber caps uh, for PlayStation 3 I haven't really tried it out um, I haven't really tried it out or sorry not PlayStation 3 but PlayStation 4 I haven't tried it out yet but um I'm pretty sure they're actually pretty okay quality for like two dollars for four caps um, plus they're branded with like a letter A which I find quite annoying but you know if it works it works and um, I guess you could really replace these caps with anything and uh, it'll work um, but anyway that's it, and I'll be seeing ya. Okay, so a little bit of a quick update here. I actually did manage to get the L and R and Z buttons on here. And they work okay. The L button, or the R button works okay. But the L button sticks. As you can see, it's even stuck right now. But, um... Everything else seems to work fine. Even got the start button working properly too. Uh, the thing is, is that you know the springs tend to be well. The springs are weird, honestly, and I'm not sure if this is because of the lack of shielding or just because or just they're just acting strange in general. But anyway, I did notice something interesting about this is that if you remember correctly, the uh, box that had the joystick was in left and right position and I noticed that the dead zone is actually a lot shorter like I'm just barely tapping it and I'm already moving like what should be like halfway and then just like a barely tap I can I can actually go to a full dash as compared to this one if I just lightly tap it you can see I can actually do a tiptoe motion. Oh, you can't even see the screen. But, as you can see, the further I move. I'll show you this one again in case I didn't show it too well. So this makes dash dancing a lot easier than it is with the official controller. It's 
So if you're a competitive player, you might actually want to get a counterfeit controller. It might actually up your game. Who knows? Just be careful with the L and R buttons.